want to um, just do a quick show of hands. How many of you here have um, edited Wikipedia before? Well, how many of you would say it was a good experience? Of those, would you say it was a good experience? Okay. All right. How many of you use Wikipedia, say, at least once a month? Like once a week? A daily? Okay. All right. It's, it's good to know you're familiar with the product. Um, so my name is Jake Orlowitz, and I organize and develop community projects for Wikipedia, a site that I have clicked edit on 33,000 33, times in the last seven years. And I try to help new editors, new people to our community, discover the same sense of thrill and purpose that I've discovered. And so I'm going to tell you a little story about how I did that called Game Storming Wikipedia. So Wikipedia started in 2001 when Jimmy Wales had a really radical idea. And his idea was, what if we imagine a world in which every single person on the planet has free access to the sum of all human knowledge? It was a crazy idea. Um, and the really crazy thing is in the last 12 years or so, it's really started to happen. So Wikipedia has 30 million articles in 286 different languages. Uh, and it's been cobbled together over the years by two billion individual edits. Um, the site's viewed 8,000 times every second by 500 million unique monthly visitors. It's just a staggering amount of traffic, which means a staggering amount of knowledge is being shared. And this is the sixth most visited website on the internet. And just to give you a sense to relate it to something you know, tangible, it's 2,000 times as large as Encyclopedia Britannica. Quick anecdote. Um, there was a co-founder to Wikipedia, a gentleman named Larry Sanger, and he thought early on Wikipedia should really be vetted and written by credentialed experts. And so he went off and he started his own encyclopedia called Citizendium. And 12 years later, Citizendium has 5,000 articles. And I just take this as a little symbol that crowdsourcing, when it's done right, really works and is really powerful. Quick. Uh, little introduction to our community, there are 20 million editors who have registered an account. But of those, as you see on the internet, only 80,000 are active each month. And of those, only 1,400 have special administrative powers. So this is an entirely self-policing community that works for free. These are dedicated, passionate people. Uh, and there is no central control. There's nobody telling everyone what you must do. We're a nonprofit. This is, Wikipedia is a gift that uh, all of our volunteers give to the world. We'll never put ads on it um, because Jimmy Wells wanted it to be a temple for the mind. So you understand the context I was working on. I want to tell you a little bit about some of the, the core pillars, the, the founding ideals of our community that have guided its evolution and growth. There are really five of them. And you've probably heard of the first one, neutrality or the neutral point of view. It means we don't take sides. We just describe debates. Uh, verifiability, when we, when we state something, we try to cite a good source for it. Consensus as a model for handling legitimate disputes. Civility as an ethic in our interactions. And then openness, because Wikipedia is free for anyone to use, modify, or even sell downstream, as long as everyone else on that stream can do the same. So it's totally open, open copyright. So how in the world does something that is so chaotically collaborative produce something that many of you rely on just about every day? So in the coding world, there's a, a law or a motto called Linus's Law, and it states that many eyeballs make all bugs shallow. This is an open source motto because when you have a lot of people working on code, you often discover things that otherwise you wouldn't find. And Wikipedia works precisely because there are so many eyeballs, and most of them are well-intentioned. Some of our eyeballs, by the way, are machine learning bots that run neural networks. So we have a combination of, of humans doing review, of algorithms helping us do review, and of machines that are learning as we go what's likely to improve or not improve our product, our encyclopedia. And so we're not perfect, but we get better all the time, one edit at a time. So Wikipedia works because the people in our community really deeply care. And this is, this is where our, the intrinsic motivations come in and are so critical for us to understand. Because people just absolutely love that they have the choice of what they work on 
that they get to work on areas that they have a personal topic interest in. They love the challenge and the mastery of engaging in these debates and trying to summarize a complex field. The recognition of sharing this work with you know, millions of readers. You know, I worked on the article on the Egyptian Revolution as it was happening, and it was getting 300,000 views per day. And like, you know, at that point, I was living with my parents, and it was just a power trip. Um, so, but yeah, people do it for joy, or they do it for uh, responsibility. Sometimes they do it because they just ha see something wrong and have to fix it. Um, so these are some of the, the intrinsic motivators in our community. Um, so it, it works for those people, but it doesn't work for everyone. And this is a real problem, and this is what I was working to address uh, in the project that I'm going to tell you about. Because Wikipedia is full of rules and hurdles and challenges, fierce debates that are held in public with strangers. And to a newcomer, the culture can often seem uh, deeply complicated, inaccessible, and even intimidating. And this is a really serious problem for us. Um, the graph on the top is the number of uh, what we call active monthly editors. And since 2007, it's gradually been in decline. So the sixth most visited website on the internet is gra gradually losing the number of people who maintain and, and develop it further. Um, you know, different theories about why this is. Maybe we've done all the easy work and you know, the bots are doing the rest. Uh, but it, there, I think there's a valid case to be made that um, we're also just losing good contributors who would otherwise be valuable members of our com community. Uh, we're turning them off. And when we uh, talk to editors and we ask them, you know, what is it about Wikipedia that makes you not want to edit or makes you leave, um, they tell us that it's really a just confusing experience. It's very confrontational and pretty lonely work. It's not very social. And there's no guarantee even that if you do make an effort that your efforts will stick. And there's something just unpredictable about the whole process that's really demotivating. So my question as a community project organizer is what can we do about this? And the thesis we've been working on, you know, me and a, a team of colleagues, is that what we need to do is change the culture through better design. So we've, we've kind of broken down four strategies that we think generally work well, especially in online collaborative communities. The first strategy is invitation. And it's really critical that you ask people to do what you want them to do. And if it's join your community, the best thing you can do is to actually go out and invite them. Because when you're invited, you feel welcomed, and it just plants the seed of belonging. Next strategy is acknowledgement. When people come to your community and do something well, you should really hammer them in the face with positive reinforcement. Just, just over and over, hug and, and give kudos and acknowledge and validate what people are doing um, because that helps connect them to the experience and to the community. Also think it's really important to show off the people in a community. So Wikipedia has this kind of meritocratic notion. It's anonymous. You don't need to use your real names. I don't know where people are from. I don't know what their backgrounds are. I just judge the merit of their arguments. Um, and there's a kind of beautiful egalitarianism in that, but it really doesn't work for everybody. Um, if you don't show faces, people can't see themselves, or some people can't see themselves becoming a member of that community. Um, and we know, you know from sociological and psychological research that empathy uh, and good faith are encouraged by visual cues. And seeing faces and learning about the people in a community are strong cues that this is a place that you can belong and you can participate in and have a positive experience. You can't change culture, though, with, with just technology. Uh, you can't just write better manuals. It really takes a change in tone. And play is one of those magic things that changes the tone. Um, it's play that makes people unafraid to fail and confident to try new things. Uh, and it's play that helps us do serious things better because we enjoy them and we feel a sense of joy in our achievements. So I was start, starting to think about all this and then just grappling with, well, if play is such a good solution, and I hear everyone's working with play and trying to incorporate play and isn't play great, um, but there's just this resistance like, well, but Wikipedia is not a game. I mean, this is, this is really serious what we're trying to do. It's the pursuit and sharing of knowledge. Um, you know, it's just not a good fit for us. And I know that that's what a lot of our experienced editors would say. Um, but I had to really question that assumption. Because when you think about it, Wikipedia kind of is a game. You know, it's a massive multiplayer, uh, open role-playing game to create an encyclopedia with a crowd of strangers. 
and there are lots of different roles, and there are lots of different things that you can do um, that help establish that you, you are a member uh, advancing towards that goal. Um, and when I looked really closely and started learning about gamification, I saw that we're even classically gamified in some ways that I think we don't really acknowledge as a community. Uh, for example, we have edit count leaderboards. You know, there's a chart on Wikipedia, and Coav F has made 1,343,000 edits to the encyclopedia. Um, so that's what I have to compete with. I've got a long ways to go. Um, so edit count leaderboards we have, when you write a really good article, you get a badge or a sticker, that, um, like a medal that says, I wrote this high quality article. Uh, editors can earn different tiers of powers and permissions. Uh, we call them user rights, but you know, in, a, in a typical um, MMO, you might, you might call them powers. We have contests to write and to improve articles with actual prizes. Uh, we have backlog cleanup and improvement drives. Um, and our articles can, can earn higher rankings based on their quality. So you know, if you create an article, it might start out as subclass, but you work on it with a couple people for, for a week or two, and then all of a sudden it's B class. And then you work on it for another two months, and it's featured article status, and maybe it shows up on the main page. So there are these ranks that you can aim for. And our editors earn barn stars, which is our version of uh, it's not quite a badge, it's bigger than a badge. It's a really exceptional achievement. You do something uh, truly fantastic and someone, a peer of yours, will come by and just give you this gift that says you are uh, really awesome and what you've been doing is incredible. So Wikipedia is serious business, it's the pursuit of knowledge, but there are really hints of gamification throughout our community. Um, what I realized about two years ago is that that was true, but it was not true if you wanted to just learn how to edit. Um, that was really just a tedious, and frustrating process. Um, and so I had an idea one night. That didn't format well, but uh, so uh, I'll just read it to you. I had an idea one night. Was if I was new to Wikipedia, I wouldn't want to read how to edit, and I wouldn't want to just get thrown out to the wolves and have strangers criticize me. I would want to experience how to edit Wikipedia in a really safe way. And so I built a game to do that. It's, it's an experiment in gamified onboarding called the Wikipedia Adventure. And it's a one hour, seven mission journey that takes you through Wikipedia and teaches the core editing, social, and policy skills that you would need to have your first edits really be full of success. Um, well, I'm not a game designer, so I had to read up on gamification and what that meant, and I read a lot. Um, and these are my distilled notes from about six months of, of reading, you know, how you create a culture of learning, um, how you build a sense of identity through achievement, and create or craft a usable venture you know, when people are interacting, um, how you inspire people to take on bigger and uh, bolder things um, by designing play in a way that makes people feel like they can discover new things and change and grow to take on new challenges. Um, and what I learned in a single sentence is that do not mess with intrinsic motivation. Amplify it instead to create delight. And so those those intrinsic motivators that we knew about our experienced editors, that aut autonomy and topic interest and sense of responsibility and, and compulsion, um, these are things that we need to be, be leveraging. These are things that we need to be introducing uh, early on to new editors and reducing the barriers, the noise that gets in the way of people getting hooked into those, uh, those really deep intrinsic motivations. So uh, it took a lot of time and teamwork to, to create this game. It took about... Um, a year and a half, and uh, we really put it together with spit and duct tape because in an open source community, you just don't have uh, a whole lot of resources. I'm a, not a coder, but I coded this game in JavaScript, and um, you know it was buggy as, as hell, but when you have 40 volunteer uh, alpha testers who will run through it and play it for you and give you 200 detailed bug reports, you know it works out. And so there are some real benefits of working in an open source community too. Um, so it started out with a script started out with a script because I thought, um, you know, there's so much content that I want to get to people. I need to kind of create this knowledge base of what it is I want them to learn. Um, and we prototyped really early and really often. Uh, this was a sketch that someone mocked up, just a, a random editor, and it gave me the basic idea, you know, really fast and quickly, um, that I wanted this to be an interactive guided tour. You know, a tour through Wikipedia where someone shows you what to do and then lets you practice as you do it. Um, and we thought a lot about capturing a certain spirit in the game. So the spirit of someone guiding you 
and helping you with lots of support. And we wanted it to feel like this when you finish, like a real sense of accomplishment and kind of awe at what you're staring out at. Um, so we looked to images in space of gazing up at the stars and stars swirling in the sky and solar patchworks and came up with this, this wacky phrase that this is really about the galactic carnival of humanity. Isn't that what Wikipedia is? So this was kind of our, our catchphrase, and it really helps to have those kind of phrases when you're designing because um, it helps you come up with something that's consistent. Um, so this is what the game looks like. And, um, you know, it has a really warm and approachable feel. You know, it's space, so some people think that's a little nerdy. Um, but, you know, there's, there's fireworks and there's pink rockets. And, you know, we wanted it to feel approachable because Wikipedia is a crowdsourced project. And crowdsourced projects work well when you have the whole crowd represented. And we know that Wikipedia's crowd is 85% male and looks a lot like me. So we tried to make this game, you know, broadly approachable um, to, to people. Um, so it begins with that sense of invitation. You get asked to come and edit um, an actual article on Earth, um, to create the article about Earth, which was you know, the most universal topic that I, that I thought people would be interested in. Um, and you get guided through every step of how to do that. And it takes place on actual Wikipedia, and I'll show you the website you can go to to check it out, but it doesn't actually touch any real articles, so it's safe play, so it really encourages that experimentation. Um, and there are a lot of gamification elements. There are challenges, uh, there are funky special effects, and there's a, a fail whale inspired oops unicorn that is crying a pink tear. Uh, I had a wonderful designer uh, named Heather Walls who works at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and the game is just saturated with positive reinforcement. Just all over the game, there is a sense of you are kicking ass, keep it up. This is exactly what we want, you know, keep rocking. Um, there are badges. But they're not really badges for tactics uh, uh, or, or skills so much as um, badges for taking on something as part of your identity. So badges like the researcher and the wiki linker um, and the communicator. So we tried to, to get people to think not just I have this skill, but I am a person who does these things. Like these are, are now part of, of me. And uh, when you're finished, you actually created a really neat looking article that's beautiful and just replete with knowledge about Earth. So well, we did a lot of analysis to figure out if this worked. And uh, I'm really happy to say that it worked. Um, our editors really liked it. Um, we had editors who just generally said they were, they were extremely satisfied with the experience of playing the game. So our qualitative research uh, was very positive, And editors said that, uh, or game players said that they felt more confident, they had more understanding, more desire, more preparation, a better sense of their own capabilities. Um, and that they just enjoyed playing it. Sorry these didn't uh, format uh, when I saved it to PowerPoint, but these are some pull quotes from our, um, our, our juicy quotes from the survey. Editors really liked that it involved actual editing rather than just talking about editing. They liked that you know, immersive and interactive experience. They liked that it helped pull back the curtain on process, you know, an open source community. Um, a lot of things can still be opaque to, to an outsider. They like that it revealed some of those things. You know, that it was a great stepping stone um, for, for taking on bigger challenges. Um, one editor actually, actually said, this is the best example of gamification that I've witnessed to date, which just blew me away. Um, but not everybody liked it. Um, and I, this is my, my favorite quote. Uh, an editor who had 100,000 edits to Wikipedia when he played this game said, this is the kind of game for idiots entertained by drivel. And, and I, I share this with you because it's really important that you aim to please, but not to please everybody, but to please your target users. And our target users were not hardened, grumpy curmudgeons with 100,000 edits. This game, this game was really built for people with new and fresh eyes. And so I'm OK with the fact that this guy didn't like it. Um, you know, it was a gamification experiment, and people, uh, they liked the gamification elements. We asked them specifically if they would have preferred it another straight and straightforward way, and they said, no, we really liked it as it was. Um, and we aimed to hit a demographic of college-age men and women, and we hit it pretty right on, but with a nice thick tail showing that the game had appeal for, uh, for a broad range of age groups. Um, now, our quantitative numbers backed up the qualitative uh, surveys that we did. Players who played the game uh, edited more afterwards. They made 20 to 90% more edits than our control groups. Get players who finished the game rather than just started it made 300% more edits. So some of that's correlational, but 
Some of it is just a lot of increased activity. Um, also, players were more likely not just to make a single edit, but to make like a big chunk of edits, like more than 20 edits in the month after this game. Um, but really interestingly, players were also more likely to make no edits at all. So we really had to think about what was going on there. And this is our theory, and I think, I think our data backs it up. The game was acting as an off-ramp and an on-ramp. And for when the game failed, so to speak, when it didn't convert people into Wikipedians, it was letting them make test edits and explore their curiosity in the game rather than on the real Wikipedia, and then leave. And it, you know, it was safe experimentation, and then they left. But for those who got involved and got, got the bug about what this was about, they went on to really be propelled uh, to a high level of confidence and activity, you know, higher than folks who just stumble upon Wikipedia and, and think, oh, this is neat. You know, we really kind of gave them like an acceleration uh, and like a speed up ramp into the community. So what's next? Um, we need more data. We need to figure out some statistical significance tests behind the analysis we're doing and see if the long-term impact on, uh, of the game is really uh, holding out over time, if editors are contributing uh, for months or years. Um, and we need to integrate it with our other new editor uh, onboarding pipeline. Um, and I really am curious, now that I've done this and I had a good experience with uh, gamifying the onboarding process, is what would it look like if you gamified some aspects of the editing process? And I would really love to build, and I wonder if anyone here has insights into how I might do that, um, a micro-contributions platform for editing Wikipedia. Um, and that is a whole new project and a whole lot more to learn. And that is, uh, that is my personal motto, that that's the real Wikipedia adventure, that you're always exploring something new. Thanks very much.